of there is an epic collection of um in the build up to yeah, in the build-up to Christmas, so uh, that's all quite good fun. Um, so today, yeah, we've got the title of Low Carbon Wales. So what we're going to do, we're only here for half an hour. The idea is to have short, snappy meetings at lunchtime. Uh, we've got my colleague, uh, Liz Horan, from the Welsh Government Energy Service, who's going to present, and then I'll come in at the end to give a little bit more information as well. And it's just an opportunity to share some of the information about what's going on in the region. That's what Chris is going to present about uh, the North Wales energy strategy and some of the plans there. So, Chris, I'll throw it over to you. I believe you are able to share your screen and, and present from there, I hope. Yeah. Love okay. Chris. Found that. Good afternoon. Um, nice to see you all. Um, yeah, I'll share my screen then. Yeah, see if that works. Oh, no, I can't do it on this end. I've emailed them to Debbie. So if you if you can get them on, and then I'll just I, I can kick off anyway. Can you just try again now, Chris? Okay. I've made you a host. Yep. <laughs> What can you see? Can you see the... Yeah, there we go. We can see your first slide now. Is that any good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there. Um, see if I can move them. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so, yeah, Dirk, um, nice to see you all. Um, yeah, short and snappy. So I've got quite a few slides, but I'll rattle through them. Um, but, yeah just get, give a sense of, of some of the work that we've been doing as part of the energy service, um, some of the work um, involved in the energy strategy, and I guess looking forward to the kind of support that's that's out there going um, into the future years. So, but i like to do, to start with, to start on um, maybe the journey that North Wales has gone on. And I think, you know, North Wales has led the way for uh, many years on many energy developments. Um, so this example here is uh, related to Cwm Dully, which is the, the hydropower station um, near Snowdon. And um, I remember my, my grandparents would mention this power station because um, we had sort of relatives that um, operated the, the, the power station um, in, the, in the 50s. Um, so I think the point I'm making is, um, the importance of looking back and looking at where we've been and where we've, um, you know, the role we've played in terms of facilitating developments of all shapes and sizes over many years in North Wales. But equally important is making sure that we generate the, the maximum benefits uh, locally um, to, to our communities in terms of employment. Um, skills and so on. So that's the kind of work that I know Debbie and the team at MSPAC are really keen to do is make sure that we've got the skills and the supply chain ready to take advantage of future energy opportunities. So I just move forward. Again, I'm sure all of you are kind of aware of the changing climate and that's the key and um, one of the key motivations for why we're doing work in this energy space and this energy transition. You know, we're seeing the changes. It's fairly apparent to everybody that the climate is changing. That has significant impacts, not just on, um, on, on, on uh, the weather, but on um, the environment and biodiversity. So significant impacts. So whilst we're looking quite often as part of the energy service work on mitigation, how we can sort of reduce carbon emissions going forward. We also have to have a focus on adaptation. So how are we going to change for in, in, inevitable changes to our climate? So the key document, which I'm sure many of you are kind of familiar with, is Net Zero Wales, um, sets Welsh Government's position on um, many of the activities that need to happen um, going into 2050. 25. Um, so there's 123 different policies and proposals within that document. So definitely good document to refer to and to be aware of. Um, there may be some synergies and links to work that you're undertaking within your organisations, whether that's public sector or private sector. And also another document published earlier this, uh, well, uh, the, uh, the, this year um, is the independent review. Um, 
of net zero um, at the UK level. So again, I've not reviewed that personally, but I think there's some references there which may be relevant in terms of um, activity that we need to do going forward, um, how we involve businesses, how we involve uh, local communities, um, how do we sort of um, deal with complex issues like decarbonising heat and decarbonising transport. So that's quite a fresh update review of, um, of, of what should happen going forward. And I think just touching back onto the, the Welsh Government's position, you know, a just transition has been a key part of, of, of that, um, that pl um, plan. Um, making sure that what we're doing now doesn't have detrimental impact on future generations, but also on other communities in other parts of the world. So really important. I think quite easy to forget that um, anything we do has it everything we do has impact but where is that impact felt so i think it's a really pivotal um policy to have and it's equally important and prominent that it's the first policy so really complex really difficult but i think it, it's right to flag it early on and to make sure that we are cognizant of that in everything that we do both individually but also as, as employees or as business owners or whatever our position is. So in terms of energy use, you know, what we've seen is um, you know, energy use um, changing. But you know, I think it's quite important to reflect that you know, whilst some sectors have seen significant decline in energy consumption industry there, the blue line, you know, other sectors are fairly flat, aren't they? You know, whilst we report carbon emissions going down because we've got more renewable energy, the grid intensities declined. You know, other sectors, you know, we're still using a lot of energy and let's not get away from that. We still consume lots of energy for lots of different purposes. I think the point which I quite like this is, you know, we, I think I've got out of the habit of, of of repairing things, you know, and and it's it's not seen as exciting as making things, but I think there's relevance in everything that we do as we look forward in terms of how wasteful we can be, and how we can be more thoughtful about what we're buying, and what we're disposing of, uh, because everything we do has got energy involved with it, it whether it's the making of it or the uh, 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 recycling of it or whatever. And that takes me to the energy hierarchy. So anyone that's seen me speak before, you know, I, I always tend to sneak this in because I think it's really important that we do focus on reducing demand and eliminating waste. You know, it has to be the starting point. We can easily jump to big numbers in terms of what energy needs are going forward. But is that based on our existing use, um, uh, possibly excessive use at times of energy? Um, and if it is, obviously, we're going to be over providing for our future needs. So we do need to start at the top, reduce our energy use, be more efficient with what we use. And then obviously, whatever we need, then we have to look at renewable, low carbon sources of power generation. So touching on the planning work or the energy strategy work, just to give you the context, you know, Welsh Government have got national policy, they've supported the regions, the four regions in Wales to develop energy strategies, and those are now in place, so they provide the framework of, of um, uh, and vision for each region in Wales, not all the regions are the same, as we know, you know, Cardiff is a very urban, uh, relatively small region, geographically and then north and mid Wales are quite similar quite large geographies um quite a, a rural um, um geography as well so some of the opportunities are different some of the challenges are different so that's reflected in some of the energy strategies and I'll touch on the north Wales one um in the next couple of slides but to make the point we're moving on now to the next phase of work and that's local area energy planning that works happened in Conwy in North Wales, and um, there's five plans to develop in the next 12 months or so. So really important that um, stakeholders, um, maybe um, at MSPAC today, um, across uh, the region in each of the five 
remaining local authorities are kind of really engaged in that process and feed into it um, because you know we're going into a more detailed phase of work now so you know hopefully the output from the local level plans will be far more detailed um, to reflect what can and can't be done in each local authority area so again busy slide lots of text that's the welsh version i've got the, the english version here um you know some of the headlines if you look at that it's a scale of the challenge it's massive you know we're looking at uh, a net zero pathway to 2050 that needs a 55 percent reduction in emissions from energy system between now and 2035 so that's significant in itself i just showed the slide that energy consumption is still relatively high <laughs> um so yeah we do need to um, acknowledge the scale of the challenge but equally, the flip side is we've got the scale of the opportunity. The economic impacts can be significant, whether they are jobs or GVA or the investment needed. Um, so, you know, 15 billion is what was um, estimated that would be needed to deliver the vision for North Wales. And just to be clear, that vision, so where you see those, those bubbles there, domestic, renewable energy, commercial and road transport, those are just indicative um, actions interventions that can be taken that's not set in stone that's just one example there could be multiple versions of of that model or that vision that could be applied to north wales but that's one uh, vision there or that's one example to be clear and things are changing and that's what's difficult with strategies you don't know what the future holds so it's very easy to be saying that we'll have um you know um, the, um certain technologies deployed or we'll have certain numbers of heat pumps deployed but we just don't know at this stage how things will move forward and things change so we have to reflect and acknowledge that so going into the action plan so the action plan is um sort of followed on from the strategy and it, it sort of builds on the priorities so the four key priorities I identified there and there's some cross-cutting actions which I think you know they apply across all of the priorities so things like skills and supply chain are common actions or common interventions that we need to look, think about whether it's uh, renewable energy whether it's low carbon energy whether it's marine energy whether it's housing whether it's transport so cross-cutting actions cover and pick up those types of interventions but what you can see um in there is a lot of the actions are to do with engaging and supporting enabling it's about working with others there's lots of activity already underway in north wales and in each of the regions and what we sometimes all all we sometimes need to do is pull things together make sure the right people are talking to to one another making sure that opportunities for economies of scale, opportunities for exploiting synergies are taken advantage of. We work with partners, whatever sector they are, public sector, private sector, community sector, working together. We don't work in silos. And I think that's what came out, I think, of a lot of the action planning work is the need to work across, across, across boundaries, whether they're sectors, but also borders as well, whether they're local authority, whether they're community boundaries, or whether they're country boundaries as well. So working with um, colleagues in, in the northwest of England and over the sea to Ireland as well, which I know um, is, is, is happening. So we have to look outwards and inwards. I think it, it's really important to, to emphasise the importance of the work that Ambition North Wales have done. The growth deal you know, has made low carbon energy a pivotal centrepiece, really, of the growth deal. Um, and you know the work that's underway now in terms of turning those business cases into tangible investments is really something to be proud of. I think there's a huge amount of work going on by the ambition board, the team there leading the work, and also the partners around the table to sort of support the development of those business cases and take them through to implementation. Because you know the, the amount of um, investment that some of this uh, work will deliver is significant for the region. And hopefully with that investment comes those opportunities to generate good high quality jobs for the region. 
I'll just touch on a couple of um, work bits as well that partners are doing. So, you know, activity in D side is really important for North Wales, that the commercial industrial sector is really strong in the Northeast. And I know partners in the Northeast have, have brought together and come together, I should say, to try and sort of work solutions for decarbonizing what is a difficult sector sector to decarbonize so i just thought it's really important to show that whilst we've got a strategy and we've got an action plan the growth deal and we're coming together quite often public sector organizations our partners in the private sector also come in together and trying to solve some of these complex difficult issues also you know um less industrial possibly, but the commercial sector uh, through North Wales Mersey D have, have set up a net zero North Wales um, or, um, um, group. And again, they're bringing together organizations that are trying to deliver the same things. Go back to that first slide, climate change affects us all. So businesses are trying to address some of these issues as well and look at how they can reduce their energy consumption, their carbon footprint and so on. So loads of good examples in North Wales of of people coming together, working together. Not sure of time. Uh, are we okay? A couple of minutes. Um, so energy service, we're supporting public sector, community sector to deliver projects. So that's what we do. We support organisations. They then lead and del deliver those. So that example is a great one. It's an ECNI co-op, so a community-led organisation that are funded and organised installation of PV on the velodrome in Newport. So one example from South Wales of community and public sector together. That's a solar farm in Flintshire. Again, public sector led project using you know, brownfield landfill site, doing something with it. Fantastic use of redundant land. And then another project, Breton All Solar Farm, community led project, showing how communities are really ambitious and looking to go from what would have been quite small scale schemes to a much larger scale scheme, which can again hopefully uh, return good returns to that um, the, um, community organization. A little bit about the energy service, you know, we support projects from conception all the way through to implementation, but I can share more detail with people after the call. And then just finally, just, you know, the importance of being strategic, you know, I talk about a strategy, but the important thing, the important thing is being strategic. We have to think long term. We have to acknowledge complexity. There's lots of complex, lots of unknowns. So you have to work with that. And that's what a strategy tries to do. We have to work as a team. And if you know, might be biased, but I do think North Wales, we work very well as a team. The collaboration is strong. The willingness to share and to work together is fantastic. And things like the smart local energy systems, you know, we've got the growth deal. There's a project in there that could help us unlock some opportunities that you know, bring energy, low carbon energy and the digital agenda together. So you know, something to keep an eye out. Stating the obvious, but we do our best. You know, we always try to do our best. Not, if, if not everything's going to work well, not everything's going to work first time, but we still work hard. And do the small things, like I say, reduce our use, be more diligent about what we use when, when we use it, and making sure that we don't overlook that need to be fair and make sure that any transition is fair and it's a just one, whilst we still seek to deliver growth for the local economy. So that's it. Sorry for taking more time than I thought. Yeah, happy to take questions. Here we go. Theo, Fritz, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I think that was really, really great. And I think that was a really great overview of, of, of the role of, of North Wales and, and the Welsh Government Energy Strategy for Service, but also some of the, the exciting things going on. I'll throw it open to, to questions. Um, and see if anyone has any questions for Chris on that, and then I will just come in and give a little um, update on some of the other activities happening in the next, you know, in the next few coming months in low carbon. Um, so I'll look in the room first. Does anyone in the room have a question? No, nope, that's fine. Anyone on screen? We can't see a lot of you, but if you, I don't know if you can put your hand up on Zoom or if anyone has any questions. 
You've done an excellent job, Chris. Everyone is fully, fully aware right. of everything. That's, <laughs> I think that's death by PowerPoint, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it was really great. I'll just um, oh, go on, James. Hiya. Uh, yeah. uh, great presentation, Reese. Uh, will you be able to share the slides to the participants? Yeah, I'll PDF them, James, and Brilliant. I'll send them out. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So there's a couple of uh, reflections that I guess I'll make. We've got a couple of minutes before half past. And as I said, we want to try and keep these sessions short and snappy so that we can get them in a lunchtime and we're not encroaching. But I think a couple of things to pull out from what you'd said, Rhys, that I'd like to, to expand on. And it might all be a bit disjointed because I was just cutting <coughs> things down as you were talking. But you said about using, um, you know, recycling and reusing things. Um, and I think I agree that's a really important thing that we can all be doing and actually something that the MSPAC out of lawn are doing uh, on Friday. It's our first try at this and it's something we're hoping to do regular is, is doing a repair cafe um, where people can bring in their items and we bring in different people who can repair various different things um, to just to try and get that, that recycling. And then we've been looking at working with um, some IT recycling companies again in the region because I think as Freya said, it's really important. Um, to look at how we can reuse and recycle all of our things um, rather than just doing, making new things all the time. And then I guess um, also to talk about energy efficiency and energy generation, they were the two sort of big theme areas, energy efficiency, how can we be more efficient in the energy that we're using? And I know it sounds really, really simple, but just things like switching things off at the plug. I, I did it the other day where I'm, I'm with Scottish Power and you can do a, an energy insights thing on my Scottish Power Smart App. And it gave me a breakdown of everything, of all the electricity I'd used in a month. And I spent five pounds a month on things on standby. And I was like, oh, it's not that much when you start adding it up over a year for things that are just on standby. And I was like, oh, so I was going around the house, switching off all these little things. You know, A, that's a cost saving, but there's also obviously a, a a carbon emission saving to be made there. Um, and I think that's something that we're really focused on trying to do here. We've launched a campaign, Defoe the Spark. So for those of you that are tenants um, in M Spark, be warned, uh, my colleague Rodri will be coming round, persuading you all to switch things off at the end of the day um, and, and doing things in a sensible way and using our electricity uh, in the most efficient way possible. And then the other element, I guess, is energy generation and you know, we could talk about all of the energy generation opportunities in North Wales um, for hours and hours, so I won't go into them all in detail, but just to say that North Wales is a really unique area, um, both definitely in the UK, probably in Europe, potentially in the world. We have such a mix of energy generation capability in, in a relatively small geography. There are very few, if any, other places you will find marine with more lice you will find or tidal marine with more lice you'll find wind with wind wind with the Gwinter Moor and the Owl Moor wind farms and the bigger projects Mona Morgan bigger wind farms that they're looking so you've got two nuclear sites in the region so we've got opportunities there uh, one of which is linked to medical isotopes which is quite new and innovative for the region we've got the Hollyhead hydrogen hub going on on Anglesey and the high net project in North East Wales, and then Trace has already pointed out some of the solar projects, and there are other solar projects dotted across the region. So to have that mix of almost all of the energy generation capability that you need right on our doorstep is a really huge opportunity for everybody in North Wales. So I would implore you to go and find out more about these opportunities and these projects and work with Trace and the team or the team in Ambition North Wales or our team here if you want to engage more in any of these sort of themes, topics, things like that, then just, you know, let us know, because as Rhea said, it's about collaborating, it's about how we can all work together to help deliver the benefits. And I guess that takes us almost to the end, and I got a few shameless plugs um, at the end, because nothing is ever for free. Um, so we are hosting a, an energy conference in May, so it's an EGNI conference, so EGNI is the, the low carbon team that's our brand. Uh, so it's the first conference we've done since the pandemic. There were a few conferences pre-pandemic and we're now hosting one. So that will be mid to end of May. Uh, so keep an eye out on social media for information about that one as we develop the agenda and start developing that because that'll be a really big event where we'll be able to, to talk about all of these projects and we'll get them into to explain
explain about what's going on in the region in more detail. And then next month on the 14th, on Valentine's Day, for those of you that do or don't have plans, um, we have uh, an SME showcase in the morning. Well, what we're doing is we're bringing in a, a range of companies um, who offer um, services where some of them might be solar panel installers, some of them might install heat pumps. We might have some planning people, some people who do uh, foreign, like, uh, what's it? Agriculture, that's not what I'm looking for. People that talk about biodiversity and the things that we can do um, to help with, you know, across the whole range. We're going to try and bring in some of those recycling IT companies just to explore and show all of the different SMEs that we have in the region that can help us all on our quest for net zero. And then in the afternoon, we have a green skills fair. So again, we've got a range of employers from across the region, from people at Rolls-Royce SMR, to NRW, to, to some of the tenants within this building, all exploring and sharing the opportunities to work in the green sector. So again, there is information out about that. I would implore you to come along and find out more about what is going on. And then the final thing is, as ever, we as an MSPAC team, we're here. We're here to help. You know, we're part of this collaboration with, with Ambition of Wales and, and the Welsh Government Energy Service and various others to try and help everybody understand the low carbon opportunities deliver. So if there's anything that you want or need, come and ask us and we can either help ourselves, point you guys in the right directions. And hey, if you've got an idea for one of these lunchtime seminars and you think, oh, I really wish I knew a little bit more about this thing, then then drop me an email or, or post at mspark.com or, or Charlie or whoever, let us know and we can see about organising something because it's we're, we're here to help. It's, it can be a quite a complicated, messy, sometimes not that easy to understand sector and there's so many words in there that even I don't understand and I work in it. So if there are things that people think they would find interesting, then let us know because, you know, we're here to help. And I guess that's probably enough from me. We filled pretty much all of the time. Does anyone have any remaining comments or questions before we close it off there for the day? Yes, in the room. Uh, really interesting, thank you. Um, quick question, so a lot was said about energy, about lowering carbon, uh, but what about the elephant in the room, which I think is transport and cars? Is, is anything happening in that space to reduce car usage? CO2 from cars and things. Yeah, so that is, is obviously a lot more difficult to do on, on a larger scale because there's, you know, obviously the transition, as I understand it, by 2025, uh, car companies will no longer be creating new um, petrol diesel cars. They will all be electrified. So it's just sort of starting us all on that transition. Here at MSPAT, we've got four chargers at the moment and we've just uh, finalising an agreement with Tesla to have eight super fast chargers on the site as part of that encouraging people to work. I recently saw in Samba Puff, they've announced a consultation about an active transport route uh, through some of Samba Puff, uh, some down some of the way to here to try and encourage people to use cycling and things. So I think everybody is trying to do their piece around, and it, it's about encouraging things like that. Lift share apps is something we're looking into as well to see how we can encourage people within our ecosystem to share things. So it's something that everybody is looking at, but is, is, is a much bigger, more complicated, nebulous thing. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely on the agenda. Okay. I have a question on that one. Yes. You know, like some of I, I live in Bormaya, so I, I'm not sure how we're ever going to have electric cars connected <laughs> here because it's such a, a difficult town, old yeah. town. Do you think there's cars being developed where you can take your battery in and recharge it in your house and then put it back in your car in the morning? I'm not saying that. Yeah, I don't know the exact answer to that, but I know that there is a lot of work going on looking at battery storage and cars and how the batteries from cars can actually be used to support the grid as well. So I suspect yeah. there's quite a lot of work being done, whether it's quite as simple as pulling it out of the car and plugging it in in the <laughs> I don't know, but there's some very clever people looking into a lot of these things, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Chris, did you want to say anything? Yeah, just yeah, it's a good point. You know, decarbonizing transport, I think, is 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 quite a prominent, challenging sector to decarbonize. Uh, North Wales, you know, we we we've got limited public transport, so people do tend to have to use their cars. Electric cars are still quite expensive for for many of the people in North Wales. So, it's that just transition. How do we ensure that we support the uptake of EVs, but also make sure we don't. Um, in a way, um, disadvantage people that do need to use public transport. And active travel, as you know from Welsh Government, is a really key plank of, 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 of the, um, 
transport strategy. So how can we get people to walk, to, to use their bikes, um, and then public transport and so on. Technology like today is, is one way that we've, um, I'm sure, moved to in the last few years. So yeah, complex, but yeah, um, lots of parts to bring together there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I, I noticed that we've only got a few minutes, we've got three minutes left, and I'd rather close it before we all get kicked out of the Zoom. Um, so we'll close it there, but as I say, if anyone has any comments, thoughts, questions for me, Chris, or the wider team, get in touch, we can filter them out, and we'll just keep doing these series and, and come along to as many events as you want, and I hope you all found that really helpful. DL, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.